This podcast is brought to you today by audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial by simply going to audibletrial.com slash TSE. Audible has over 200,000 titles you can choose from. Whether you're looking for sci-fi, sales, business, motivation, they have it. One book I'd recommend you check out is Maximum Influence by Kurt Mortensen. It's a phenomenal book and it teaches you 12 powerful universal laws that can help you become more persuasive. If you'd like to check it out, learn a little bit more about this book and get a free download, simply go to audibletrial.com slash TSE. Again, audibletrial.com slash TSE. Tell them your boy Donald sent you. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, I have the one and only Dr. Clarence Lee Jr., who is the author of Persist, How to Beat the Things That Make Us Quit. Dude is amazing. We had a fun conversation. And this is something that I feel, again, as sales professionals, that we sometimes we get into the little lull where we just feel like the world's coming down or everything is like against us and nothing is going our way. And then sometimes we have those highs where we feel good and we're making money and it's good and life is awesome, right? But he's going to talk to us how we can continue to go when things are not going so well, when you get those rejections or when you had that deal and for you know nothing that you did wrong, it just fell apart. Or maybe you're just going through a lull in your sales career. You're having a challenge. Well, he's going to teach us, man. He's going to give us some good stuff. How to persist, how to beat the things that make us quit. So Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. is going to give us all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into the content. Take us out, Mr. DJ. Welcome to the show, Clarence. Thank you. Thank you. I am excited to be on and looking forward to bringing some value today. Well, I'm excited to learn from you, man. There's nothing like some good information on how we can be persistent. So often as sales professionals, one of the things that we do we get excited and then we die off, right? But we got to make sure we're continually, you know, just being persistent. And I want to know some of your ideas today and learn from you on that. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and what you do, man? So I'll tell you the quick abbreviated version. My name is Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. I'm a physician, entrepreneur. So I'm a doc that also has a, a business mind. I've been practicing medicine for about seven years. I do uh, occupational medicine now on a part-time basis. And my passion lies really in transformation for individuals and helping them get what they want out of life. So in my practice of medicine, I realized early on there were some limitations in the exam room. And so I wanted to go deeper for patients. And so I started to go into this personal development work. And from there, I started writing books. I do speaking and online courses, and I put on events on personal development, just trying to help people actualize what they know they truly can do. Mm, Love that. Love that mindset, man. And I think we're going to have some good time chatting about that as we dive deeper into this conversation. But you just finished a book recently, and it's out on Amazon right now. It's called Persist, How to Beat the Things That Make Us Quit. I love that, man. (laughs) Yeah. So, I'll tell you the back from the the reason I wrote the book is it's my second book. The reason I wrote this book is because as I've journeyed through life and I've interacted with people, everyone has always told me about some childhood dream that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say, oh, when I was little, I was really interested in blah, blah, blah. And then right after that, there's always some reason or an excuse of why they quit. And that has been, I mean, I can almost say ubiquitous among most people that I meet. That's it. I was really into this, but then, you know, such and such happened. And so now I'm doing blah, blah, blah. And so I went on this journey when I started doing the research to write this book. You know, I've got like over 75 different references, articles, books. But when I started to dive into the research, I'm like, what is it that make people quit? And how can I give some people some tactical tools and a step-by-step way of overcoming them? And so the book's kind of broken down into the top 10 kind of excuses of why people quit and how you can beat them. Well, this would be great for us sales professionals and entrepreneurs. You know, so many sales professionals, I can tell you ones that I've coached as well, that they have a desire, they want to do something, but you know, all of a sudden, whatever, life hits them or 
the reality of sales as a new seller hit them. And then they're like, oh my goodness, this is tough. And then they drop out and quit. But let's dive into the first step. What is the very first thing we need to do as a sales professional, entrepreneur, just individual to not quit? So I, I and I'll tell you a backdrop for my my story and and how I've, how I've become kind of a persistence expert. So for me, it it took me five years to get into medical school. So I applied to medical school over five hundred times. No, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> so five hundred over five hundred times, dude. So what? Every medical school for five years, I applied. So I got hundreds upon hundreds of rejections over a five year period of time. And through that, I learned a lot about my mindset and how I had to think about those failures. So I would say the first thing top level is to separate failure from yourself and look at it as objectively as possible. So what do I mean by that? To keep with my medical school application scenario, I didn't look at it as the schools were rejecting me. I looked at it as the schools were rejecting an application. I hadn't met anybody at that school. No one even knew what I looked like. My picture wasn't even involved. They didn't know me, but they knew the application that I put in front of them. So the easiest thing I would say, the very, very first step is to objectify the outcome from you. I was not the failure. My application failed. I can change that application. So in the case of sales, and it's it's funny because when I went off into business by myself, That was one of the main things I had to overcome was I was already a professional and already had this, you know, prestige or position in the hospital setting. Mm -hmm. And then here I started off in the entrepreneur world and nobody cared. (laughs) (laughs) So I had to learn how to sell very quickly. And just having this mindset was, no, they weren't, they're not rejecting me. How do I adjust my approach continuously to improve that? to increase my odds of getting what I want. And so that's what I did year after year after year, improved my GPA, improved my personal statement, called schools, just did everything that I could to get what I wanted. And so what I learned from that, just to wrap up, what I learned from that is most people have the ability, most people have the mental capacity, they have the aptitude. The only thing is that most people give up too early. So most people that I've met, a lot of students that were trying to get into medical school, they might tell me they tried one or two years Mm. and and they just gave up too quick. So yeah, first step is objectifying that failure from you. It's not you, it's your strategy. Wow. You know, there's there's something that can, if there's one piece of advice, you know, if we were to end the episode here, that's one thing you could take and go and apply. It would help so many of our listeners, so many of the sales professionals and entrepreneurs out there. And I learned something similar earlier on in my first sales training experience when I was the first program I went through. And that's one of the things that helped us was to objectify that concept, you know, separate yourself from the deal. Because, you know, like you said, if I'm calling into a, a big organization, they have no clue who Donald Kelly is. I hope they would, but they have no clue who I am. <laughs> right. So, you know, and I can't get offended that they sit to hang up or whatever. They don't know who I am. They're not offending me. They don't, they're not be saying, Donald, your bloodline and your whole heritage, you guys are all awful. It's just right. there's a salesperson calling in and it's not a good time right now and I'm going to hang up. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah, man. absolutely. Absolutely. And to keep plowing through, I think. And so, you know, what I learned through my research on this persistence and resilience. So there's a lot of buzzwords around this. Some people use persistence. It's also wrapped into resilience. Other people will hear the research term is called grit. But all of those are really, really tied to a lot of psychological frameworks how you view things and the meanings that you attach to things. Interesting. Yeah. I know there's a book out um, called Grit and, you know, kind of, yes, you know, hit on that as well a little bit. It's a great book. But let's go in deeper. So now we separate that. We objectify the things. What can we do? What's the next step that's going to help a sales professional or an entrepreneur to keep going that 500 times? So if if we're doing long term, I'd probably say the first thing is to make sure that you keep the vision in front of you. And so the book is broken down into main excuses or some of the main excuses. So <laughs> please share one, a couple one of, the, of those. <laughs> yeah, the number one excuse that I, through my research is people are afraid. They are scared. So this would be the indiv- individual that maybe has a hourly job where they might be doing sales for, and they might be really good at sales. They might mm. be say working at a Sam's club or something, elect- electronics department, which I did. <laughs> and you're selling these devices, but you're getting paid for showing up and you're getting paid to be there. You're not getting paid on a commission, but you're a good salesperson, yeah. but you're afraid 
that if you take away that hourly and say you move over to commission based, that you're not going to be able to earn as much. So that's the easiest kind of sales example I can use. But the number one thing is fear. And so overcoming fear, I would say the first kind of step there is to one, understand, hey, keep the vision in front. What am I trying to do and work on my belief that I can get that done? Because fear will keep you in your fear box your whole life. And so, you know, you have to make a decision that if it's fear that is holding me up, identify that specific fear, right? And write out, and so this will be the step-by-step of fear, write out the worst thing that could happen. So say you leave your job, to keep with my analogy, Mm -hmm. and Tim Ferriss went through this in his book, I think it was 4-Hour Workweek. Say you leave your job and you go to commission. What's the worst thing that could happen? Oh, you don't make any money. Oh, then you lose your job. Then you're homeless. And then you can't eat. And say maybe you're on the street and a bird poops on you or something. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I mean, write out the absolute worst thing that could happen. And then by the time you get to the bottom, you will almost see that it's almost comical that your worst thing that you're worried about is going to happen. Right. But I think a lot of people don't walk themselves through what is my fear really based in? And let me write out exactly what I'm afraid of. Because I think once you write it out and you go through that process, you'll see that it's almost comical what you're fearing. It, it's almost comical that it will, that it will actually happen. So it's, it, there, there's no excuse. Go for it. The, the worst thing meant, I, I love that idea, man. I have to implement that because, you know, so I find Grant Cardone has this book and it's, the idea is called 10X. You know, I'm not sure if you heard of that one, but Grant basically says, Oh, yeah. Says, oh, yeah. You know, just 10x everything. If you want to make $100, put another 10x that <laughs> yep, and, yep. Uh, you know, make that even more. And I think there are times where we tell ourselves we can't do it. And I think in situations like that, the sales professional could ask, what's the worst that can happen? What is the worst or an entrepreneur or even ourselves? Like, even if it's outside of sales, man, it's maybe losing weight. You might say, oh, I can't do it. I'm fearful of what you know, people will say about me. But what's the worst thing that's going to happen if somebody says something like, Donald, you're fat. <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, exactly. the world didn't end there, right? You know, you, right. can, you can keep going on with that. There's, um, I want to go back to your experience because you did some pretty darn cool things as well. You actually was a, you're a surgeon in the Air Force or did you fly? Yes, I was a flight surgeon. I mean, a flight surgeon is basically the physician in the Air Force that practices aerospace medicine. So what does that mean? That means that my specialty is assessing the pilot's ability to do their job in their work environment. So for a pilot, their work environment is typically 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 feet. And so I've got to know how to do their job. So the Air Force, uh, in all their wisdom, realized that it would be pretty smart if they taught doctors how to fly just to make sure that the guy they're putting in that $10 million jet can actually do what he needs to do. (laughs) So I wasn't a pilot, so I'm definitely not a pilot, but I was basically the, the medical professional that flew on a regular basis with the pilots and decided if they could go or no go. Wow, man, that's awesome. And did you, I mean, I can think about some of the fact that, you know, how you were able to get to that point, you're pretty sure you had to overcome some of the fears that you had, whether that's, I don't know if you had a fear of heights or flying or just being shot down, even though you're not in control of the plane, you know what I mean? Because you were both in friendly times and not so friendly times, right? Yeah, so I'd, I'd probably say the biggest fear in, uh, in aviation is in-flight emergency. So that's if you're at altitude and say an engine goes down or a flap doesn't work or something doesn't doesn't go the way it needs to be. You know, how do you get that jet returned to base in a safe way and make sure you don't lose the pilot and you don't have to eject and and all those things? And in aviation, I mean, this is very consistent with what I teach as far as persistence. In aviation, we worked off what we call checklists. And so sales professionals if you implement this checklist strategy, this is a way for you to objectify things, get out of your fear, get out of your emotions, and just do what you need to do. Do what you're trained to do on a consistent basis so you can get back home safe. And so if we had an emergency, and you know, God forbid it was the first time you ever had that emergency because then there would be no checklist, but <laughs> um, <laughs> most of the emergencies that happened, most of the in-flight emergencies had happened before. And so you're trained to rock yourself through a checklist, a step one, step two, step, you know, step three, step four, step five, to make sure you get get back safe. And so 
really the fear was overcome, if you will, by my faith or my belief in that checklist. And so my leaning on my training, my leaning on the fact that I knew what to do, that I could reference my checklist and that this had been tried and true before, I stuck to that. And I've had, you know, I only have, luckily I've only had a few IFEs that I was a part of. I mean, obviously everything worked out okay. So for sales professionals, I would say, if there's a checklist that you're working off of, if there is a process that has been put in place that has been proven to be successful, what ends up happening when disaster happens is if you stray away or you don't stay consistent with the checklist or with the process. So, you know, I'd probably say those are probably the two main kind of connections between it is going back to your training, trusting in your training, trusting that you know what you're doing, sticking to the checklist and banging away. We're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, he's going to go even deeper. Dr. Lee is going to give us some more insights, things that can help you when you feel like you're going down and how you can get that picker upper. You're listening to the Sales Evangelist Podcast, and I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. So October 5th is right around the corner, and I'm sure you have already heard about TSC Hustlers League. If you have a team of sellers, check it out. If you have three sellers, if you have 30, check it out. If you are a sales professional or an entrepreneur, you may just want to improve your close rate. You may want to become that next top performing seller. Check out this semester of TSC Hustlers League. We have two tracks going. One of them is focusing on business development. The other one is focusing on building value and increasing our win rate, how we can close more deals. If you want to learn more, just simply go to the show notes to salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 663. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 663. Or you can go ahead and check it out by going to the salesevangelist.com slash hustlers. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash hustlers. It would be an absolute honor to have you join us this October 5th. Hey, welcome back. And now as we dive into the second half of this episode, I want you guys to listen closely. Some of these great insights that Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. is going to give us regarding persistency, about how we can continue and just continue to push forward. So if you have your Evernotes or pens or whatever ready, let's go ahead and dive into it and get the second half. What are some of the other fears that tend to hold us back? I remember you, you said there's uh, there's several. Yeah, there. so there's top 10. So I'd probably say the next one we could probably chat about, which was the, is a, was the last one that I talk about is, kind of talked about a little bit, but it's comfort. And so one of the things I found as, you know, people were just interviewing people and just, okay, what what is it that's really holding you back here? Sometimes we get to a position in our life and we're comfortable, right? We've got a comfortable job, got a comfortable life. And I found myself in this position as well, practicing medicine and things were comfortable. Got living in a nice neighborhood, nice car. My, 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 my kids are doing fine. Why am I going to go off and stop seeing patients full time and pursue this entrepreneurial author, writer, speaker dream? Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm comfortable. Why am I going to put these things at risk to go after this vision? Right. So sometimes that comfort that we seek will actually hold us back. And so I, I think most people know if they are performing at the level that they believe they can. And just to look at comfort and see, hey, is the fact that I'm comfortable here the main reason why I'm not going out and and trying that next thing? And so, but I would say comfort is actually one of the big ones as well, being comfortable. You also, on the book, there's a chapter you have about, I don't have money. Like money is is, is one of them. Like, (laughs) (laughs) I don't have enough money. There's not enough money to do this. I can't do that. How does that, you know, limit us from taking action? I want to hear some of your thoughts on that one. Yeah. So in the book, I talk about this idea of, you know, needing resources and creating value. And so when I hear someone say that they don't have money, that's this, you know, this concept that I lack a specific resource that I need to make these things happen. And so I like to teach people to shift their mindset over to creating value. So creating value would be Taking some sort of knowledge that you have or some expertise that you have, your salesperson, you have information, you access the information that the person that you're trying to sell to may not have, 
and communicating a way to add value. So if there's something that you want to do, if you're an entrepreneur and you feel like, say, you want to go into a brick and mortar business, but I don't have money because I need this build out and I need this and I need that. Well, use your mental capacity to figure out how you can add value right now. Maybe that might be something that's service-based, something that be maybe consulting-based. Maybe there may be a way for you to add value to someone where you do that it doesn't necessarily require cash right now. So the easiest thing would be consulting, right? Or, you know, for me, it was like, oh, how do I get out and, you know, and start a speaking business? Like, how do I do the speaking business? For me, since it's service-based, it's just a matter of me figuring out how I can add value to whatever client I'm trying to approach, right? figure out a way that I can add value to them, communicate that value. And now I have something that I can give and use that I could monetize, right? So it's just a simple shift. If you're solving a problem, you think you need resource, that's the reason why you can't solve it for the customer. Try to figure out how you can add value with what you have right now. Mm, I love that, man. And I, there is a, I sometimes I, I have been in a group with uh, masterminds with entrepreneurs. And I wish you I had your book at the time, it's just a couple of years ago now, <laughs> to introduce them to that idea because some of them use it as an excuse that limit them. You know, they're saying, I, I just don't have enough money. I can't do this. I'm like, you don't need the, that, that money. You can just start. I love the way you worded that with value. Yeah. And it's, and it's a lot, you know, and it, it's, and a lot of people, another way to objectify this is, you know, don't get too, <laughs> I tell don't get married to your idea. Okay. So if your idea, Say your or your approach or your strategy. If that strategy isn't working, then try something else. If that approach isn't working, then try something else. But you can test that in the marketplace, right? So you can test and see if you're able to sell this, right? Your value proposition, if it picks up traction in the marketplace, you run with it. If that value proposition isn't working, then try another value proposition, right? Don't get too married to this idea that you came up with, that you thought it was going to work. And then it didn't work. Don't take that as a hit to you. Just take that as a hit to that strategy. Figure out a different value proposition and try another one. But the objectification is huge. It's absolutely it's absolutely huge in, in every step of the way. Because once you start, right, you won't necessarily get the snowball rolling. It won't be massive in the beginning. It's going to be very small. So, you know, your mindset around that is, is going to be critical. There's a, and I wish we could stay for chat for like another hour, man, but I'm telling you guys, you need to check out this book. It is phenomenal. It gives some great insights and some things that will help you to, to get your mind right. But there's one area I want to focus on. And this yeah. is when we've failed, we've tried, and I failed. I try to create a business and I try to go to medical school. You know, I tried it 400 mm-hmm. times or 499 mm-hmm. times. But how can, what advice would you give to someone who is like, they're out there today, they're struggling with their selling, and they're just really having a difficult time and they want to give up? What advice would you give to her or to him on how they can keep trying again? So it would be twofold. So I would say one is to look at past successes. And then I would say two is beef up on your preparation. So and the reason why I say it that way is because when you have a lot of failures in a row, when you get a bunch of no's, you get a bunch of no's, it can be kind of take a little it can take a little air out of your tire, right? It can be deflating, right? It can be tiring. And so that's when that preparation is going to come in. But, you know, the first bit is revisit past successes. So you have to remind yourself that you have succeeded at other things in your life. So you might be having. So for me, you know, one of the things that kept me going and me realizing that with persistence, I could do something was I was I was an athlete in in high school and college. I played basketball Mm -hmm. and I always encourage people your kid, how your kids get into sports? Because I learned so much from sports and I took it right over to the business world, right into the academic world, all, all, all the same. But I was a shooter and in high school and college. I was a shooter. And so I did, I wasn't born a shooter. Right? I wasn't born just knowing how to shoot a three pointer. I just went to the court. Right. And I would shoot over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again and tweak and tweak and tweak and over and over again. So why am I bringing that up? It's because I knew as an adult, right? I was done playing. I was done playing sports. Basketball was over. When I was running into these walls trying to get into medical school, I knew I had succeeded at other things. 
So I knew that I wasn't necessarily fair. I had to see to the other things. So one of the first things I would say is if you get yourself on a little spin where, hey, nothing's going right for me, make sure that you're reminding yourself of successes that you've had before, because that's a way to build confidence. That's a way to get your esteem up, right? Because, hey, I'm accomplished in this area. I've done it over here. I can also do it over here. And then the second piece would be preparation. So when you lack motivation, I always I always ask people, how often are you preparing to succeed? So if it's sales calls that you're doing, how much preparation time are you putting in before you actually get on there and sell? It's like, because if you're on a sales call already, that's like the game, mm-hmm. right? It's like, that's it's game time. So you have to perform how you've performed in the preparation time. So if you haven't put in the preparation time prior to it, you can't just have game after game after game. I mean, you're going to have some improvement, but there's got to be some prep time in there. So the more you prepare to succeed, the more confidence you will have when you get to the game time or when you get to that sales call, right? So I would say if you're lacking motivation because you've run into a bunch of no's, 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 go back to preparation. Go back to the basics, right? Get to the prep and then revisit your past successes. Man, dude, if there's one major takeaway folks can take and walk away with today, one major piece of advice from our discussion, what would that one piece of advice be? I would say, and it I always come in twos, but my one, my one, two. We can take two. Let's take two. <laughs> my, my one, two, I always tell people, just don't be afraid to dream big. Might be cliche as in people, but I believe it with all my heart. All of us have been given a vision for ourselves. And if you've dreamed that vision, that means you can do it. I truly believe that to the core of me. And then the second piece is do not give up too early. Don't give up too early. That's what differentiates the people that get it. There's nothing different between me and a guy that didn't get it. The only difference is that I just didn't stop. Love it. Love it. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to keep pushing through. And, and that's that's all that matters, man. I, I'm Absolutely. I'm all in. I'm all in, man. If folks out there want to get in touch with you, <laughs> get connected with you, what's the best way for them to connect with you, Clarence? Yeah, so uh, just my website be uh, ClarenceLeeJr.com. Junior's just Jr. So uh, ClarenceLeeJr.com. And uh, if uh, if they're if they're willing to get the book and give me a review, I've got some amazing bonuses for them. So if they just go to ClarenceLeeJr.com forward slash persist, uh, they can find out all the information on all the bonuses. Yeah, they can email me there. Yep. Done. Let's do that, guys. Go ahead and follow these thing information. We're gonna have it in our show notes. So you can get access to Clarence and to get access to these bonus. I highly recommend it. Take the time to do it. It will be well worth it for you and for your career. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Really appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Had a great time. Mm, I told you, Dr. Clarence Lee is going to give us some good stuff, man. He gave us the goody, goody stuff. And it's, it's just exciting. It gets me pumped to like say, you know what? I'm going to go out there and smack defeat in its face. I'm going to smack doubt in its face. I'm going to just go drop kick all those you know, mean rejections. And I'm just going to keep moving forward because that's what it all it takes. And you know what? Sometimes in life you do get rejected. But you know what? It doesn't mean that you are being rejected. It's just the fact that that's the situation. And sometimes some people are just jerks. You just have to learn to get up and move forward with it. And if you want to stay in touch with Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. and learn more about him, simply go to the show notes of this page, the salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 663. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 663. All in all, I share the stuff because I really want to help you guys. I want you guys to be successful. I want you to persist. I want you to join TSC Hustlers League because, man, I'm telling you, one of our, one of our members this past semester, he has seen a 300%, 300% increase in revenue and closed his first six-figure deal. And next year, looking like a 400% increase. So I'm telling you the stuff that it works and I would love for you to check it out and for you to join. Go ahead and find out, apply. We only have a few more slots available. The salesevangelist.com slash hustlers. Again, I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. But most importantly, I want you to go out and do big things. Big things.